you saw problems like this last week, um, kind of bringing them back, seeing how much you remember after the extended weekend. Go ahead and simplify, please, each of these expressions using what we did learn last week, please. So for that first one, remember that we can take a radical and we can rewrite it as an exponent by using a fraction. So we're going to have x to the power of a fraction. Now, what number should be on the top of my fraction here? It's always the exponent on the x. So that is, yes, the 24. Okay, the number on the bottom then, that's the one that comes from the root. But there's not a number written there. So what is that number? Two. Yep, it's the 2. Because anytime you see a square root written that way, in other words, a root without a number shown for the radical, it's got to be a 2. Well, notice that fraction reduces. 24 over 2 equals 12. So this whole thing just equals x to the 12th. All right, for the second one, same basic process. So I start by writing it as x to the 24 over 3 this time. And then 24 thirds reduces. That's just going to be x to the power of 8. For the next one after that, we get x to the power of 24 fourths. Okay, 24 over 4 equals 6, so that whole thing is just going to be x to the power of 6. And then the last one, same process here, where we turn it into x to the power of 24 over 5, and then we have a little bit of a problem. Because 24 over 5 is not a whole number. So, what do we do with that? And that's going to be today's new lesson. This is what we're getting into today, is what happens when it doesn't work out to just be a whole number. So, the trick with it actually has to do with mixed numbers. So, what I want to do first is I want to take 24 fifths and turn it into a mixed number. So, how many times does 5 go into 24? Four times. Okay? And so it's going to be 4 and something fifths. Well, 4 times 5 is 20. So this 4 right here really represents 20 fifths. So how many are left over then if I'm going to get to 24? 4. four. And so it's going to be 4 and 4 fifths. So there's our mixed number. Now, how is that helpful? Well, let's get back over here to our work. Let's make ourselves some room so we can work downward with it. I'm going to rewrite this here as x to the power of 4 and 4 fifths. Which at the moment doesn't seem all that helpful, but I can use a little bit of trickery here with it and rewrite that as x to the power of 4 times x to the power of 4 fifths. Why can I do that? Because remember when I multiply the x's like this, that means you add their exponents. And if you do 4 plus 4 fifths, it gives you 4 and 4 fifths. So I just split that up. And the reason is because it makes it a little bit easier to see why the whole thing equals x to the 4th times the 5th root of x to the 4th. So you notice, this x to the 4th, it just stayed there. And then I was just changing that x to the 4 fifths back into radical form. Now, why does this work? Well, when I see this original up here, the fifth root of x to the 24th, in order to simplify that, what I'm doing is I'm pulling sets of 5 out of the x to the 24th. Because, of course, as a little side note here, if I have x to the 5th and I do the 5th root of that, it just equals x. So if I can pull a set of 5 out, in other words, if I can pull x to the 5th out of the inside there, that means I can pull an x out. And so I say, well, how many times does 5 go into 24? It goes in 4 times. Notice that's the exact same question we ask when turning something into a mixed number. How many times does this go into it? So the, we use the whole number because the questions we ask when simplifying a radical are the exact same questions. And it's easy to show the work and see why we're doing what we're doing along the way.
So for that first one, you still start by turning it into a fractional exponent. So in that case, it's x to the 15 over 2. Once you've gotten it there, because it is an improper fraction, it's top heavy, turn it into a mixed number. So that becomes x to the power of 7 and a half. And the next step would be the one where we turn into x to the 7th times x to the 1 half. But that is one step where if you want to skip that and leave it out and go straight to x to the 7th times square root of x, I'm okay with that. I'm also totally fine if you actually write that step of x to the 7th, x to the 1 half in there. Because it's a nice reminder about why it works the way it does and why we get x to the 7th times the square root of x. Right on the second one, turn it into a fractional exponent. Write that exponent as a mixed number, in this case 4 and 2 thirds. And then we get x to the 4th times the cube root of x squared. And that one's done. That's as good as we can make it. On the third one, same start. Turn it into x to the power of 22 over 4. But did you notice something about that? If I have 22 fourths, that reduces. Now, well, you could wait until the end to reduce, but why? Why work with bigger numbers than you really have to through this process? So as soon as you see the fraction that can reduce, go ahead and reduce it. So it just becomes x to the 11 halves. And then just like usual, turn that into a mixed number. So that's going to be 5 and a half, which means that we could pull 5 x is out of the whole thing, but we still have some x's left inside of the square root, so it's x to the fifth square root of x. All right, and finally, for this last one, same start. Write it in exponential form, so that's going to be x to the 30 over 5. Then 30 over 5, that reduces, so reduce it, but in this case it happens to reduce to 6. And we've seen that before. That's like what we saw last week, what we saw at the start of class today. It gives us just a whole number. If that's the case, you're done. X to the 6 is our final answer there. Now, one little note here. You're writing a lot of these things together, and it can start looking a little bit tricky to read. I want to give you an example. What if I wrote that answer for the third one? Like this. Because I see this a lot when I look at people's papers. Is that x to the fifth or is that the fifth root? No Based on the way it's written, kind of hard to tell. And yet I see people do this all the time. You don't want to do that. You want it to be clear about which it is. So like as I wrote that answer up here, notice a couple of things I did there. Uh, one, I put kind of some white space between them. I left that open so that I didn't like cram them together. Giving yourself a little bit of room to write them helps. You'll also note that whenever I do write the root in there, notice I always put it right in the V. It's always above it. I'm not writing it like over here. If I was going to be doing a cube root here, I'd have to put it right in there. And so it just helps in terms of keeping things straight and being able to correctly read it and understand what's happening with it all. All right, so go ahead and check your answers here. Make sure they're all looking good. A little detail-y thing. Notice in the last one, we end up with w to the 1 and 3 fifths. I don't need to write w to the power of 1. So, of course, that just becomes a w there. <coughs> Another case where it's really important, though, to make sure that you're writing this 5 right in the v of your square root symbol. So it's nice and easy to tell that it's applying to the 5 is applying to the radical, not applying to the W there.